Whew. All right. That's it for Truth Trees. Now, Truth Trees is a chapter that my professor skipped in my logic class. Uh, but I did the chapter myself before the class had even started. So I thought I would take you through it because I thought Truth Trees are pretty fun. So we're going to just call it quits for now on formal logic. And we're going to come back to it maybe in a, a week or a couple weeks or a few weeks. And we're going to start doing some wonderful stuff. Let me just give you a few questions that you could try on your own. Some easy ones, and you've already got the rules, or the rules are available to you. You're given instructions to derive a certain conclusion. We'll just put our conclusion we want right over here. We're trying to get Q and R. So by various mani manipulations and formations, uh, you do what you can. Now, on line one, our assumptions, we have R and Q. Now we've got a rule, that, uh, and you could decompose this and say you have R and you have Q, and then you could put it back Q and R. Or you could just say, I did the commutative property, and I got Q and R. So that's the simplest. Now let's just skip down. Uh, this one's a bit more instructive. If we have the goal of L and not G, and on line one, we only have one assumption. And that is L and T occur inside of parentheses. And it is joined to the fact that G fails and S occurs. And S occurs. So, how would you end up with L and not G? Well, since these are all just conjunctions, we know that we've got L and T and G and not, and not G and S. So the first thing we'd have to do is get down to the point where we had L and T and not G. Uh, pardon me. And S. And that would be line 1, ampersand, decomposition. And, and they have, now they're going to call it elimination, not decomposition. Ampersand elimination. Because instead of decomposing it into its parts, we're eliminating it and just listing its parts. So whatever linguistic analyst, analytic reason they have, we now call it the ampersand elimination rule rather than the ampersand decomposition rule. And then, of course, we can take apart these ampersands. And what we want is L and not G. And this is, we're not trying to totally take everything apart. So we can just take L, we can say ampersand uh, elimination from line 2. All we want is the L. We don't want the T, so we're not going to list the T. Then we're going to say not G from line 3, ampersand elimination. And then, of course, line 6, we're going to say L and not G from lines 4 and 5. Uh, ampersand introduction. Now that's just the beginning easiness. We get on to 15 lines of these and pretty soon we get to start using the fun rules like Modus Tollens and De Morgan and uh, that's going to be later though. I have to wonder, you know, I, I put a lot of effort into these logic videos and some people are getting some effort out of it but I have to wonder about turning my channel into the logic channel. I don't know if I should turn my channel into the logic channel. So for now we're going to call it good on logic and we'll come back to uh, some more logic videos later if there's the interest expressed by people out there uh, and if everyone's not totally exhausted by that already. And I'll just note one last thing is that uh, I'm using the logic text that I learned logic from in college but Leonard Peikoff uh, recommends an introduction to logic by Joseph. Second edition revised. First edition was 1906. Second edition was 1916. So this is before a lot of the gobbledygook gets into it. Now just to let you give you some idea, I haven't read Joseph's logic, but I can tell you 
a little bit about the ridiculousness that occurs even in the text we are using. Uh, because in chapter 6, titled Meta Theory, I've taken on page 212 this section here. I put a big line through here, through 213, all through 214, up into page 215, almost halfway down. And I just say trivial, it's trivial. It is ridiculous and trivial. Um, I may, when I finish the chapter, say that everything above here to the marked point should be eliminated and reduced to this single sentence. Now here's the sentence. Every sentence of sentential logic contains an equal number of left and right parentheses. And they spent all this saying that. And now some of you, someone has said they're going to use this textbook this fall. I hope your professor knows enough to skip the chapters on meta theory. You should skip chapter 6 uh, and chapter 11. So we've done up two truth trees and no more. Uh, a little bit more as we just started, but uh, that's going to be it for now. We'll come back to it later if the interest is expressed. Uh, and I just got to get some more videos on Mr. Cropper. I don't want Mr. Cropper to turn into the logic channel so soon.